Hello everyone, my name is Michael, and today we're going to take a look at the second challenge in the Flareon 7 2020 CTF. So, once it's unzipped, we have this garbage.exe and a message with a little story about how they accidentally deleted the challenge and it had to be recovered, but it's corrupted. So, we have to be able to get working again, reverse engineer it, and acquire the flag. So, if we just go ahead and blindly try to run it, we'll see Windows agrees it seems to be corrupted and refuses to run. <clears throat> so even though it says access is denied, that's that's because it's corrupted. So let's take a look at Detected Easy, and we do see it is UPX packed. Um, so we might just naively try to unpack it. I'll put unpacked. And we get an invalid overlay size so it seems to be corrupted but this gives us a bit of a clue saying there's a size issue possibly so I'm gonna use a program called PE bear by hashers aid that uh, breaks down the PE format of the file and gives us a lot of information about how it's how it's structured um, disclaimer I'm not very good at the PE format uh, this was kinda of the first fixing I've ever had to do of a corrupted PE. So it was a learning experience for me. Let's go ahead and take a look at the optional header. If we scroll down here, we see a lot of red. Um, it's highlighting the size of the import directory, the resource directory, and the base relocation table apparently are not correct. So apparently we have some size issues. If we look at the section headers here, we actually see a raw size is being uh, highlighted in red here of 124 in hex. If we actually expand this, we'll see that in the header, that means the file says it's supposed to be 400 hex. So we must be missing some bytes. Uh, it says it's supposed to be this size, but it's actually this size. So let's take a look in the hex editor. Uh, if we actually, uh, we can also do it here. If we take a look at the 9e section here. This is where it starts. We'll go to the end of the file here. We have offset 9e000. And uh, we see, yep, it is length of 124. Um, you can actually see <clears throat> in the PE, it's in the file itself. Uh, this is where the sections are. We have the R source. Um, you can actually read the Microsoft spec on this to be able to read this by hand. Um, that's, I mean, that's basically what this program is doing for us. But we can confirm uh, that entry point we see that, or that starting point is the 9E. Uh, we have that 400. I forget which endianness it is. It goes that way or that way. Um, but that's our size. So one thing that um, you could try to do is to correct this and give it the correct size. Put this as 124. Now this is actually the rabbit hole I fell into where you edit that and then you come over here and these will still be red and you need to fix each one of these. Try to change this size respective of what the size is. Um, there's probably a way to do it that way but it's it becomes a rabbit hole. Um, I think it's a pitfall a lot of other people are kind of running into actually. Um, if we actually jump to the end here, we can see uh, part of what's going on with the, the cutoff bytes is we have the manifest is cut off. This might explain why Windows thinks it's an access denied issue because the XML is messed up. Um, so you could kind of copy this from another program and fix the manifest, but you'll still have some bytes missing. So uh, we just have a discrepancy of these two numbers. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to do a hacky way of doing this in Python. We want to have that 00, zero byte. We want 400 minus 124 hex. And this will give us a string of those bytes that we need. Let's go ahead and paste that in here. Hit save. Let's go ahead and reload this. Now if we go to the section headers there's no longer a red. We have the raw size is correct. Raw address is correct. We also go to optional headers and these are no longer red so it must have been aligned correctly. So we have 
basically fixed something with it. Let's go ahead and see if we can unpack it now. Using that same command and successful, we have unpacked a file. Alrighty, we have this unpacked.exe and we'll see it is almost double the size. Um, alrighty, so that is the first hurdle, getting it unpacked. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're dealing with here. We have a Visual C slash C++ executable. So let's see, can we just run this? Unpacked and no, it actually has further corruption uh, because what actually happened, all these zeros we put in here, this is actually the import table section. We just completely nuked that. Um, so that kind, I think that kind of uh, cascaded to the unpacked part. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in Ida. And we say, yep, it is a PE. And it jumped to the wrong monitor. All right, so if we take a look here, we have a main function. Um, we'll see the imports are just gone. Um, there might be some way of fixing this. Um, I think there's two ways to solve this, actually. Uh, the f I've heard some people have said that you can actually fix this and get it to run. Um, that is not the path I'm going to take because uh, that involves a little more work than what I'm familiar with. Um, if we actually take a look through the assembly here, uh, just a cursory look, we see some strings here. We see some numbers being assigned to variables, a lot of variables with numbers. And then if we look at call, we have some D words being called that might be like a dynamically assigned function which is probably going to be nuked because of our imports are broken. Uh, we only really see one function being called is this, uh, this, this subroutine here. If we go into this one, uh, we can kind of see, get a gist of what's going on here. We have a big old thick line here, which means this is a loop. Uh, we have an XOR here, We're moving some registers around. Um, you, know, you can kind of deduce what's going on with the assembly here, but what I'm going to do and what really made it easy for me to figure out what's going on is I'm going to decompile this. I do have Ida Pro. Um, you can also do this with Ghidra or uh, Binary Ninja. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, decompiled version of this. So, yep, we have that string that is being assigned to string copied to this variable here. We'll see that gets called with this function here that we are looking at. Uh, that gets called a few times. And then we have, actually, these are not just not just a bunch of variables. They're actually, uh, Ida detected that they are variable, or uh, arrays, I'm sorry. Um, they would be assi assigned these. So we can also see that that variable array is being sent to the same instance of this function that our first string is. And we have a 61 after this. And then a broken variable here that's undefined. Okay. So let's take a look at this function here. And we can, it's kind of goofy. I think this might be like a structure being passed or something. Um, but we can see that A2 gets assigned to this, which is actually going to have this V5 is kind of our I variable. Let's go ahead and just rename that to I. That's our offset. Uh, we have, we're starting off with 66, which happens to be an F. Uh, then we're incrementing, we're going until A3. So A3 was a 61, so it seems like we have a length here. Um, but if we actually look at the heart of this, we see there is a XOR operation that's being stored back into an array at this offset. It takes this offset modulus of another value plus this value, which is a offset, uh, which is from here. Okay, so just blindly guessing, it seems like this is a key, and we must be XORing some type of ciphertext here. So let's actually change these numbers into hexadecimal. And we'll see that they are all 32-bit uh, values. They're actually D words. And what that means is that the endianness is flipped on what we see here. 
So let's go ahead and just copy this. I'm going to use my tool crypto tester. And what we'll do here is we'll kind of translate this backwards. So we have a 232333 3, 3, 2C. And we have a OE3F43 6449. Let's go ahead and run that. Oh, I must have goofed some of those letters up. But we do have a message box here. So this is actually decrypting some plain text here, and we'll see that these are ASCII characters. So that's interesting. So basically, we would just copy that procedure, change these all to hexadecimal, punch them in. Um, I'm going to save some time of me doing that on screen. And yes, yeah, messed up a couple of characters there. Uh, here's the full ciphertext of all of these in hexadecimal flipped. And we see that this is all ASCII because it's orange. Let's take a look here and congratulate or congrats. Your key is corrupt garbage at flareon.com. So we have our key. So we input that into the website, get our point, and unlock the next challenge. This has been the second challenge. Um, it's fairly fairly difficult if you're not familiar with the PE format. Uh, that can be a really big hurdle um, that a lot of people are getting kind of caught on. I was caught on it for a couple hours, honestly. Um, like I mentioned, that rabbit hole, I kind of went down. But it really is just as simple as just calculating the difference between what it says that it's supposed to be and what it really is. Fill it in with a bunch of zeros. And then you can unpack it. Um, so that has been my approach to solving the second challenge of the Flare on 7 2020 CTF. Thank you for watching.